Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Brad Coima with Coima Coima Varlick and grain seeing some pressure except I think Minneapolis wheat while the livestock futures we've seen some two-sided trade already here today and Brad let's talk about the cattle market because we had a corrective day yesterday after a down week last week but really it's been a cash-led rally and so it's important to talk about cash first. What are you thinking about this week? Are you maybe just a little less bearish? Great lead in. Thank you for having me on. I always enjoy this. You know, my friends, customers, some are both, uh, believe it or not, uh, they say to me, you know, Brad, I, I like you better when you're bullish, you know, because I've been a little bit standoffish, a little negative. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks, yeah. And, you know, I like me better when I'm bullish too, by the way. Um, but so I'm starting to flip here a little bit uh, to being a little less you know, negative for a minute. Uh, and, and it, and I think it has to do with answering your question. Um, you know, I've been asking around, where does the producer, when you're current, like we are, average weights are still 15 pounds less than a year ago. Right. The Packer's still killing 126,000 last yesterday. The Packer has kept his margin through this whole thing. There hasn't, I don't think he's lost money for 15 minutes, even on the dollar 85 cattle because boxes are above 300. Okay. So, when, though, does the feedlot guy, the producer, the guy that owns the cattle, when does he bow up a little bit and say, you know what? I don't have to take two to three lower this week like it's been the last three weeks. My cattle aren't very fat anyway. Um, you're going to still have this stress of the, of the guy in the south who's a basis trader, um, doesn't sell very many negotiated cattle. Uh, he's just going to turn them in and, and get on down the road because he likes the basis. You're still going to struggle with that. Uh, but even at that. Um, you know, we have the ability to be and should be premium in the north. So I'm wondering if maybe this is the week, for instance, if they try to bid the south under 170, I would hope that they'd be a little bit resistant to that. You know, so then could we move our market, at least on old crop cattle, to 178 to 180? I could see it happening. So we'll see. Maybe I'm overly optimistic. I might be a week or two early, uh, but uh, I, I'm certainly not a gloom and doomer here at all. Uh, we should get a little leadership out of the feeder cattle. One would think, too, with this corn going to nothing. Yeah, and obviously we're seeing a little bit of upside there this morning. I got to ask you from a technical standpoint on the futures of live cattle. Obviously, we're at a discount, which should be supportive to the cash. Uh, but there's some talk about this June bear flag and that we got to hold last week's lows. You know, what are you seeing on the charts? Are you concerned about that? Well, I don't disagree with anybody's chart analysis because it's an important part of the market. Um Okay, I'll say it. For every ship at the bottom of the ocean, there's a room full of charts that didn't do them any good either. Ha ha. <laughs> um, the um, it's important because that's what funds look at. It's important because a large right. segment of our traders are too lazy to understand or to try to work at fundamentals. So yes. Uh, now I would argue that we just took out the last five days highs here while we're visiting uh, August cattle eighty higher, June cattle up seventy five. Wow. Um, yeah, but if we take out the bottom side of that thing, you're going to project the leg down, down to fill those gaps that everybody wants to talk about, you know, all the way back down there. I, I just felt like the fundamental part of me, you know, everybody's talking about this gap down there at 157, right? Just below 157 on the June. Could we go there? Of course, because I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. But to me, I just thought that the fundamentals were such that there, that there's not enough cattle to think that we should be breaking the cash market down to anywhere, even, even 10 over that level. Uh, so I, I got to mix my two uh, analytics, fundamental and technical and say, well, if they break out, sure, I'll go with it too. Uh, but I, I just feel like the fundamentals favor the fact that that's this steep a discount. We could try to move the market back to the upside. Right. And the open interest has been actually going down and the market's held together. You have the funds that are still kind of defending their long position here, aren't they? Well, I think the the open interest comment there is a, is a good one. I, I uh, it's been amazing. It, you know, since a week ago Monday, we've taken over thirty thousand out of the June cattle. Thirty thousand, and does anybody really notice? I mean, you know, we we had a right. sharp break, and then we just walked it sideways for five days. Now a little higher. Uh, June has not lost ground relative to August, which is another thing you would expect because we're in the Goldman roll. Sell June by August. That's what the roll is. Right. Today's the third day of the roll. Old rule of thumb for, for my old floor cronies and I, that would be the, that's the day that you would expect that the, at the end of the day, the, the spread to flip where you would expect to see June start to gain against the August. 
And that's kind of where I'm thinking too, uh, you know, as we look into the end of the day today and tomorrow, whether we're going to start to see this June, try to maybe move a little bit more towards where the cash market is and, and leave the August kind of where it is. Now, you and I've talked about this basis thing here a lot and yeah. um, 17 is an analog year. Um, and, and I will say this, 17, when we were this huge premium, almost identical to what we were this year, um, what largely happened is the futures stayed almost the same, maybe a little higher, but basically what happened was cash came down to meet futures. That's where convergence was at the end of June and almost exclusively because cash came down to meet it. Don't like the story. I'm not making it up. And that doesn't mean it has to happen this year, but that's what happened that year with the wide bases. Quick, quick question on demand. Um, choice boxes, as we pointed out, are above $300. We're going into the best demand time period here coming up. So that's going to hold together, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. I think I think that the the, the box uh, side of the thing, the demand side of the thing, is, should be fine for 30 days or so. Um, I, I happen to notice exports, uh, that data also came in here uh, this morning. Uh, exports overseas, 11% again. That's a solid number for beef. Yeah. That's a big number for beef, frankly. Um, so I can't see that domestic demand being really too much trouble as you're going into Mother's Day, Father's Day, Memorial Day. What's the other holiday? Anyway, Scott's got it made up. Mother's Day, isn't it? Yeah, no, Mother's Did Day. Did you say that one already? Yeah. So, no, okay. I think demand's fine. And uh, the, the, the packer's done a pretty good job of protecting his margin anyway. So. Gotcha. Okay, so let's talk about hogs. You mentioned the exports, and they've been very good here for pork recently, but we just can't get that market to really gain any traction. It was an ugly week last week on the charts. Is this all about just too much supply because slaughter numbers for the week last week were so much above the previous week, and we know we're getting this sow liquidation, or is it a demand problem? Because it doesn't seem like it's demand to me, but... It, me either. I... I tell you what, I struggle. I, you got a great question. Uh, producers ask me the same thing. First quarter exports year on year for pork, 14% uh, over a year ago. Um, pretty hard to bitch about the exports. Um, right. Yes, there's a there's a nagging big supply, uh, and 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 with that, you have this pressure on the market that it has to demand has to be perfect, not just decent. It has to be really really good. And, and, and I think because of all the rhetoric going on between, you know, what's going on with the, 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 the back talk with China and all this stuff, there's, but there's that worry that, well, what if, you know, and, 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 and that doesn't help the thing. Um, I, the big problem just from a trading futures thing is, is that these funds are short up to their eyeballs and we can't ever seem to get the market to rally enough to spook them out. Um, so the, the funds keep pressing and the fundamentalist sits here going like, well, we always rally in May. And don't you think that the cash market went up seven dollars in the last two weeks? Yes, I do. And I know that. And, and, and yet they just keep getting beat up. Um, the fund short position sure has dominated the, the futures thing. That's for sure. Yeah, I would agree with that. OK, grains under some pressure here to be expected. Planting is ahead of the average. Weather looks pretty favorable and you got a WASD coming up. So kind of a. Kind of a bad combination here for this week. So to extend gains from last week was a little bit difficult, or it's a headwind, isn't it? And China uh, canceled another uh, uh, corn. Yes, shipment. and another what? Ten point seven million bushels of corn cancellations. This right, morning. something like that. And yes, I don't know either why we allow them to do that, but it is what it is. Uh, uh, they are not reliable. Um, Forty-nine percent planted averages forty-two. Uh, yes, I know that there's places that are dry right where I am. It is, in fact, uh, and I know places in Nebraska are too. And then on the other hand, there's a lot of places that have really received some beneficial moisture um, and we're way ahead of schedule planning. So it's right. uh, we're going to struggle a little bit here. Now, maybe maybe we could at least strike the, the, the bell with the old song of uh, while well, the market makes the bottom the day the news is the worst. The news is about as bad as it's been here for a while. You can't raise a crop on May 9th. Um, and you can't lose a crop either on May 9th. So I would hope that there'll be some second chance rallies, as you know, from visiting with me before. I am not particularly friendly at all, new crop corn or beans, and especially not beans. Uh, maybe the WASD on Friday will remind us how tight old crop is, although the market is starting to lose its focus from that. And it's going to start to buy a new crop. It, it, that's just the way it works this time of year. Um, but that hopefully would stabilize maybe old crop like July corn, July beans. Um, maybe against some pressure in the new crop. Um, but if this crop continues to develop with a 92 million acre deal that we've got uh, guessed anyway by the USDA that we're going to plant, 
we're going to struggle. Uh, but again, it's very early in the season. We'll be talking weather every week. Yeah. And you're looking at if you put all those numbers into an equation, a 2 billion bushel may be better ending stocks number for corn. So that's going to be a yeah. little scary for the trade, don't you think? The new yeah. crop potential for that corn is, is yes, it's uh, keep you awake at night if you're bullish. So, you know, no doubt. All right. Thanks for joining us. Brad Coimo with Coimo, Coimo Varlick. That's Markets Now.